Um, yeah, thank you very much. Morning, Sean. Morning, everybody. Uh, this morning's tech talk um, around, funny enough, B-rated geezers. It's a term that's been um, abused or referred to quite a lot in the last bit. So I want to clarify one or two things so that when we go out there that we don't get involved with things that do not uh, concern us. Like I said, or like we have been saying for the previous three, this is the fourth one now, these deck decisions uh, based on problem statements being forwarded or uh, problems being logged, um, questions being asked for as far as the resolutions concerned. Then we look at the reference documents and standards. And there's a bit of sometimes heated reasoning and debating going on around these documents and standards. Um, a quick rundown of the consequences of non-compliance. And then finally, we look at the resolution to the problem. So let's start off with the problem statement. It is a legal requirement in terms of VC 9006. Just for interest sake, um, the VC is from the old um, term verplicht compulsory. So it's actually a very, you can see that's the 9006 one that was published, but as far as verplicht compulsory means, or oh, that is the meaning of the VC, that all geezers must have an energy efficiency rating of at least a class B. It's also a requirement in terms of VC 9006 that all geezers must have an LOA issued by the national regulator. The only some geezer suppliers can currently offer geezers that comply with class B and or have an LOA. Um, just a note, a sales permit may be issued by the national regulator for compulsory standards. In layman's terms, a sales permit can be regarded as an LOA. So, resolution required. Should the installation be regarded as compliant if a geezer without a Class B rating with National Regulator uh, LOA or sales permit is installed? What documentary evidence should be provided to the auditor inspector to verify the validity? So when we looked at the standards, the first standard that popped up there and the most important one is the SANS 151 is the standard that these geezers get tested to, to be awarded either the mark or to be listed as a comply, but they need to be tested to SANS 151. The standing loss per 24 hours determined um, in accordance with the 743, which is the test procedure, shall not exceed the values given in columns 2, 3, and 4 of table 3 which we'll have a look at now, appropriate to the nominal capacity of the water container given in column one or the value marked on the actual water heater. So if it doesn't, if it's not 100 or 150 and there's a, a, a value in between or whichever the lower or obtained by interpret, interpolating between the two values. And then just interesting to note that the uh, when it comes to solars, the standing loss per 24 hours shall not exceed 75% of the values given. So they need to be better insulated. Solar water heaters should also comply with SANS 1307, which is basically the system uh, that is created or formed between the collector and the actual geezer. So let's jump into table three quickly. What we've got table three is maximum permissible standing loss. So what I've done is I've picked 150. So if you look at a 150 liter standard electrical geyser, the maximum allowed um, standing loss currently at 2.59 kilowatt per 24 hours and then slightly higher for um, a system type, which there are not too many of those around. And then the requirement is that 150 liter solar, the standing losses should be 25% less. So the maximum loss should be around 1.94 kilowatt per 24 hour period. So this is what is currently in, okay, sorry, I'm, there we go. This is what is currently in SANS 151. And there's been an ongoing effort to update and change. And last year, uh, this gentleman from the national regulator sent this letter out to say that it is to inform all stakeholders and industry members that the enforcement of VC 9006, which commenced on 1st of August 2018, 
However, manufacturers and importers will still be given an opportunity to deal with current stock, which does not meet the Class B energy efficiency requirement by applying to a national regulator uh, sales permit. And they needed a test report, a current LOA, or a copy of the SABS mark, if any. So you see this, this letter was written in 2018. And it continues to say they need an indemnity letter, which stated that the company will not be held liable for, uh, or sorry, your company will be liable for any damage or incident which may occur in this period, provide an implementation plan on how you will achieve full compliance with VC 9006, proof of payment and evidence of the latest levy payments. So then carries on to say, um, all sales permits applications will be subjected to technical evaluation before a concession will be considered. Successful applicants will be informed once the NRC CEO approves the sales permit. And on the birthday, successful applicants will be granted a concession for the period 1 August 2018, right up to today, 1st of August 2019, and applicable to all old stock produced or imported before 12th of August. No extension will be granted. So then it carries on, and the gentleman then continues to sign off this letter in November 2018. So let's have a quick look at P rating. If you look at the requirements, basically, um, the polyurethane insulation, insulation between the cylinder and the outer galvanized casement is 128% thicker, resulting in the hourly standing loss decreasing from 108 watts per hour to about 50 watts per hour, which is a 50% decrease on the 150. A lower energy loss is a more efficient electrical water heater. A, we find B rating. So what we have got is the same system or the same applies and you see the the guys that have got the the class b rating they're very proud of it and they display that all over and you'll find that in the same breath you've got 100 150 and 200 that have got this rating and the most important thing um if you guys are starting to type questions please no brand names no asking which one may we use or which one can we not use it is something that you sort out with your suppliers This is an existing uh, energy efficiency rating or these bars. You'll find them on fridges, uh, stoves, uh, microwaves, all kind of electrical appliances. We're currently running around here somewhere. And the actual requirement is to have all of them move up to class B or they should have moved up to class B. The balance of the standards other than 151 in 10400 XA, which is your energy efficiency requirements, uh, in order to comply with a functional regulation, uh, the following guidance is provided. Then we go to 412, says requirements for water installations in buildings shall be according to 10252 part one and SANS 10254. So if the first regulation refers to 10254, then what we do is we go to 10254 of 2017 and it says there that a fixed electric storage water heater complies with SANS 151. It is a requirement when you're putting or you're assembling a system. It is a requirement to have a compliant geyser. 1010 the solar one, storage container shall comply with the requirements of SANS 151 as detailed in 1307. 1352 when it comes to heat pumps, specific requirements for assembly, the storage water heater shall comply with SANS 151. And then we jump into the municipal bylaws because that's where it happens, that's where you install. Um, and I can tell you about 90% of the water bylaws all refer to uh, Technical requirements for a water installation, water will comply with 10252 and water heaters must comply with 10254. If I don't have yours up here, apologies, um, but they are, like I say, about 90% of these things um, or these bylaws actually require the same thing. And you can see what the Maritzburg guys in here as well. Here we're looking at 10254 in there, city of Chuani. Same thing, 
10.25.2.1 and 10.25.4. So you see it's a repeating thing. So even the guys that are supposed to enforce the bylaws in your area or that are supposed to enforce the application of the building regulations, the municipal bylaws require compliance with uh, 10.254. You can see even Marmersbury, Swartland area, then looking at that. Mossel Bay, the same thing. So having looked at these, the municipal water bylaws and SANS documents require that the storage water heater must comply with SANS 151, and they do not mention Class B requirement. The current SANS 151 does not have a pass or fail criteria of Class B, but a lower standing loss requirement in Table 3. VC 9006, however, has two requirements, namely that the water heater must comply with both 151 and Class B. Therefore, the VC requirements are contradictory until SANS 151 standing loss requirements are changed to accommodate Class B requirements. In the interim, the National Regulator for Compulsory Standards who enforce VC 9006 have, had, have allowed an extension uh, up till today, referred to document which we looked at earlier, and the, the issue with that date of today is going to be that the current installation of storage water heaters that must comply with 151 and VC 9006 and therefore suppliers and installers that do not have the necessary documentary evidence will be at risk of prosecution by NRCS and before you fall off your chair and before you send in 250 questions the, the prosecution by the National Regulator for Compulsory Standards we will be looking at the actual resolution that was taken. The tech then concluded in, or we got to the resolution as listed. All geezers compliant with one of the following will be regarded as compliant. A valid LOA, a valid sales permit, or an SABA certification not older than 2015. This resolution will remain in force until the 1st of August 2019 unless SANS 151 is brought in line with the regulation VC 9006 before that date. I can tell you I've seen the drafts, I've seen the, the documentation. The guys are working on, there was a bit of a stalemate or there was a bit of a, um, a lack of progress but they are currently working on 151 furiously. I've seen some of the drafts, I've seen some of those uh, energy bars, those stickers uh, that indicate the, the B requirement. I've seen some of the, the tables being changed. So what we're saying is that with a stroke of a pen, you'll find that uh, 151 will be amended. And whatever happens after that, the guys that have had their keys as tested to that standard or the guys that have the, that have already gone there through to do the, the right thing or the legal thing, uh, kudos to them. The, the main thing is this is that those amendments are in the process of being finalized and they're optimistic that it will be out in the next month or two if all goes according to plan. So basically what we're saying is if you're doing an audit, or we're doing a, 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 an inspection somewhere on, a, on an installation. If your geezer complies with 151 or VC 9006, whichever way, then obviously there's no hassle. But as far as audits are concerned for the IOPSA compliance auditors, your, your workmanship and 10254 will be uh, audited as per the standard. And as soon as there's an update between or an update from the guys on that working group with regards to 151, then we will make it public or we'll make we'll announce it. But you, you'll find that the geezer manufacturers that are out there, that are a, these uh, class B ratings do not give, get handed out per manufacturer. Um, as you saw per that one slide, let me just get this, sorry. Let me just get back to that slide here. They are rated size. So a manufacturer that has got a 150 and a 200 liter geezer class B rating that not and it does not automatically grant or does not automatically mean that they do have for the 100 liter or for the 250 liter. They'll be marked individually and they'll be promoted as such. So 
I know that sounded like a whole lot of paperwork, but have we got any questions? Right, we do have a couple of questions for you this morning, Munir. The first okay. of which reads, why were the B-series cylinders made bigger and longer? Um, as per that slide that I showed you, um, that one, the polyurethane insulation between the inner cylinder and the outer galvanizer is 128% thicker. I think in the case uh, I speak uh, under correction, but from reliable source, what ended up happening with one of the manufacturers was they took a 150 liter cylinder and they put it into a 200 liter casing and they filled up that uh, polyurethane insulation between the casing and the geyser and that way the 150 liter geyser then became compliant so yes unfortunately if you need more insulation you're going one of two routes you're either going bigger in diameter or you're going longer because you still want the 150 the issue is that we needed the extra insulation around that to have less energy loss from that geyser so yes unfortunately it is a problem and the, the longer ones you'll find with a with a less diameter or the smaller diameter probably be used on replacements we have had complaints or well, we've all heard of complaints of these uh, new geezers not fitting into the same place where the old slimline one came out so yes unfortunately the only way you can insulate them is to add more insulation and therefore either bigger in diameter or longer The next question reads, what does LOA stand for? I knew someone was going to ask that. Um, letter of, you know, it's a letter of acceptance, letter of approval. Give me a second, yeah. Okay, ask me the next question. I'll find it in the meantime. All right, the next question here, we've got legal or not, a retrofit, a retrofit recently completed with a Giza more than five years old. I'm not sure what, what, what is the, the, the question. I think it's, I think it's, um, is a retrofit recently completed with a five-year-old Giza legal or not? Well, with a five-year-old geezer. Oh, I mean, sir, for the for the replacement. If you had a five-year-old geezer and you you installed it now, that geezer would have had either a SABS mark or an existing LOA or a, um, a sales permit attached to that company or to that brand. So yes, it will most definitely comply. All right, perfect. And then we've got a comment here from the audience. Uh, the comment reads, any geezer not complying with the bylaws 15.1 must not be used anymore from now on onwards. Uh, yes, that's correct. The, the problem with that statement is you need to be able to back up the... Um, if it doesn't comply with 151, the current form or the current form that uh, 151 has got states that you need to have uh, your heat losses as per table three. So yes, yes, you are correct. You do not install um, the a geezer that does not comply with 151. The problem is that you need to prove non-compliance or you need to be able to show non-compliance. All right, perfect. Um, Manier, I've got a um, suggestion here for the LOA. Is it letter of authority? Yes, that's the one I'm looking for. Thank you very much, Manier Frey. All right, perfect. Thank you very much, guys. Um, that is the end of the questions. Manier, would you like to say something to end off quick? No problem. Um, I know this morning sounded like a like a whole lot of paperwork. All as I'm suggesting is, and I know I'm preaching to the converted, the fact that you're spending your morning with us. Please make sure that when you do go into your merchant or your supplier this morning, um, until further notice, that letter from the national regulator is still in effect. So if you do have 
a choice between four or five geezers on the shelf. Make sure you ask your supplier whether those geezers are indeed B rated if they're not marked and preferably get proof of compliance. And then, like I said, we'll keep you updated with the progress of the actual amendments to 151. Keep it safe out there. Next week, same time, same place. All right, perfect. Guys, just before I do end off the session, I just want to thank again this morning's sponsor, Heat Tech, um, helping to bring these sessions free to you guys. So, guys, I am going to go ahead and end off the session now. Thanks so much for joining us, and I hope that everybody enjoys the rest of their week. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.